Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The delightful children's book, The Children of Valor by Patricia McLaughlin, is a story filled with kindness, friendship, responsibility, and love. Three children live together on an island where their days are spent sipping cinnamon tea and romping in the sand. One day, the oldest child reveals to the other two a dream she had about a baby who was lost and needed to be rescued. They embark on a voyage where mystical powers help the children rescue the baby. Patricia lives in Massachusetts, loved to write children's books that remind her of her time spent with grandchildren and nieces and nephews. Early on, she spent many hours laughing and realizing life holds a lot of good times when children are around. She's also the author of Two Little Farmers and One Wooden Shoe, Lissy Ann and the Isle of the Gumdrop Trees, Fuzzy Learns a Lesson of Love, and Can an Apple Really Talk? Patricia McLaughlin, author of The Children of Valor on a Faraway Island, is our guest on This Week in America. Patricia, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Yes, and thank you for having me as a guest. What a delightful series of books you've written. Talking today about The Children of Valor in particular, all the books available at Patricia's website. We'll give you that throughout the program. Amazon, and you can link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Love what you've done with the stories, the messages in the books, done quite well. What inspired you to write these books? I mentioned at the beginning that sort of inspiration from children running around in your life. What was the inspiration for these stories? Um, the inspiration actually came from different sections of life that my kids or my grandchildren went through. Um, some of them are just whimsical stories, but most of them I try to put a little message in like two little children in a wooden shoe, that's the message that you don't have to look so far to see that the grass isn't always greener in someone else's yard. Yes. You know, yours is great. Yours is fine too. And one of my best books for a message would be fuzzy. Where it's a lesson of love. Um, many kids go through bullying. Adults go through bullying. So for me, I wanted to tell them that the best way to be back when you ha you're facing a bully, is to care about yourself. If you inside know that you're worth something and that that's what counts in life, not what's on the outside, not what you look like, not who you can be physically, but who you are inside. Yes. Once you know that and once you embrace that, I think you can embrace anything in life. And I, so I wanted to get that message across, and my granddaughter, Tori, um, is in the book, with Fuzzy, the little caterpillar, who thinks that it's ugly and can't fly like the butterflies, and then learns later on from Tori that right now, what things may change as, as it gets older and changes with time, but that what's really important right now is to know who you are, to accept it and to love it, and then you'll learn to love others too. Tori did that with kids. She would work um, through high school. She met up with a child that um, had a disability, and even the, the um, teachers would call her to ask her to give them a little hand with the child from time to time if they got ready to leave school, <laughs> they had, yes. had enough of a day or something. Tori would go in and talk them into the classroom. So that's where that inspiration came from, watching Tori with these kids and knowing there's another way to treat bullying out there besides just yelling. You know, learn to love yourself. You and know, then you can love others, and it's going to work. The messages are there, and, and you mentioned that because sometimes adults always think the grass is greener. Somebody else's lawn is always nicer than yours. These messages really apply to children as well as adults. That's the nice thing because as an adult is sitting, reading the child, the book to the, your books to the child, or the child is reading the books to the adult, it gives us something in common to talk about, doesn't it? Because it's problems that we all face. Right. And right now there's so many problems. COVID is out there. The kids are stuck. They can't go with their friends. They can't be anywhere. What better time than grab a book and read, you know? So having these books out there and available for parents to buy and, you know, read with their kids to me is a plus. 
It really is. And I'm going to give you the spelling now, the information on Patricia's website. And I'll do it again at the end of the program. The, the, the recent book we're talking about is The Children of Valor, and that's V-A-A-Y-L-O-R. Book available at uh, the usual places. And information on all of the books, of course, at Amazon and at Patricia's website is Patricia McLaughlin. And you'll, I'm going to spell that. Patricia, of course, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A. And McLaughlin is M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N dot com. That's on our website. I'm giving you a lot there. You just go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you'll click that on and go right to the website. And you can, uh, of course, Google all of her books, and the books are all available, of course, at, uh, at Amazon. So as you're describing these books, uh, are they primarily based on, on real, real children or, or, or fictional children or a combination of both? Um, they're all real children. The stories may be a little fictional, but they're all real, real children. Obviously, you don't go on out to sea on a shoe, in a wooden shoe. So yes. that would be fictional. But Jack and Maggie are my nephew and niece. So they're all based on my grandchildren on my niece and nephews. That's interesting, and you've taken those characters, and obviously in sharing their lives, you understand what they're thinking, some of the problems they're facing in the world. How difficult is it? In fact, I, I'm going to ask this differently. You probably have so many ideas seeing these kids grow up and the problems they're facing. You just mentioned you know, COVID-19 now at the top of the list. Uh, how difficult is it, how challenging is it to take those ideas and to break it down in story form? that makes an entertaining story and yet you can get the message across at their level. How, how difficult is that for you? Well, for me, not difficult, but let me explain. I have seven children of my own. I have six grandchildren and I did a home daycare for 13 years. Okay. <laughs> I always had children around. They always had a problem here, or a problem there that we'd have to kind of weed through and talk about in that. So, you know, it wasn't hard for me to be able to take situations and do what I've done all my life, which is make up rhymes, <laughs> you know, put yes. them together and come out with a story that hopefully makes the child smile at the end. So you had like a focus group wherever you were during the, 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 the children growing up and then with the, with the kids in daycare. So this has been, you've always had sort of a group that you can learn from. Yeah, you're right. My husband and I did a, duty of you know being involved with children our whole life he worked as a firefighter um and then odd jobs painting bus driving everything in between but he still found time to be with the kids so i was at home most of the time with the kids he got time to be with them when he had a day off and for that we just you know had a great they i think they had a good childhood well, I'm sure they did. And for you, you really understand the sensibility of, of the, the, the children you're writing for. You've seen children grow up and go through these circumstances. The, the book is The Children of Valor. That's the, uh, the main book we're talking about. I'll go through all mm -hmm. of the others. They're available at Amazon and Patricia's website as well. Once you get an idea, how long does it take for you to formulate that idea and, and get the book ready for publication? Good question. <laughs> Sometimes, believe it or not, I can do a book in an afternoon. Other times it can take me two or three months. It just depends on my frame of mind and what pops into it to work into. I need to tell the story. So as I go along, I have to just wait until it's in there in my mind to get it back on paper. But, um, you know, it just, it just depends on what is coming to me at that point in time. So it's interesting. It sounds like all four of these books that, that we're talking about or five of these books that we're talking about, they all came at a, at a different pace. I mean, some were easier than others. Some you, you zip through in an afternoon. Others took a little bit longer. That's right. It just depended on the frame of mind. I was, you know, writers will say I have writer's cramp. Well, I guess it came to me too from time to time, but I'd find something, someone would say something and I'd think about it and say, okay, I'll go with that. I have a book coming out about um, a little girl named Joanna, who's my granddaughter, and um, some bubble theories. Well, bubble theories came because Ju Julia, her name's Juliana. She loved to blow bubbles. And my daughter said they should be theories. Well, there was my book. So oh, that took yes. me a few months to do, but it'll be out eventually. It's in the background, getting worked on as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and all of this information at Patricia's website, Patricia McLaughlin, McLaughlin, that's M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, PatriciaMcLaughlin.com. And you can uh, get all this information on a website. And the book's available, of course, at Amazon. What are the aspirations for the book? It sounds like these ideas keep coming. You keep writing the book. What are your, your hopes for the book, the aspirations? What do you hope the reader takes mm-hmm. away? Okay, people, there are people who have been doctors, lawyers, my husband was a firefighter. They have something of themselves to leave behind when they're gone. I wanted something that I could leave as a legacy of myself when, I, when I've left this world. And I thought, what better way than connect it to my children so that they're part of my legacy. So that's what I really did. I wanted to get it in print and have their names there and you know, something that was whimsical that would make them smile when they're older even yes. and leave it for them. So it was my legacy. Well, and what a legacy it is. It's, it's a great story. It's so well done. It's so well illustrated. Let's talk about, again, the age group. Who do you, do, when you're writing this book, what age group do you envision to be the primary reader for the books? Okay, primary, I'd say between maybe three and four up until around eight. But working with children half my life, I know some children are ready for a book earlier and other children aren't ready for the same book when they're older. You just have to gauge your child. But my my age group would be like, say, four or five up until about eight or nine. You mentioned that you're working on another book. I, I, I get the impression in talking to you, your mind is probably always looking for a story for another book. How far out are, out are you if you had the time? Uh, how many how many book ideas do you have? You're juggling right now. Uh, I have a sea of them. I have so many things my kids did that I still look back and think, oh, my God, that was so funny. You know, <laughs> so many things the grandchildren yes. did that, you know, maybe watching them take baths because they had loaded my kitchen up with flour over a flower site isn't funny, but now it is. You know? <laughs> so there are a lot of stories that are in my mind. I have a sea of stories that I can really do eventually in time. Um, I'm not sure if my stories will outlive me or if I'll outlive my stories. Who knows? But they're there. There's a whole bunch still to come. Now, I mentioned the illustrations. Once you write a story, then you bring in an illustrator that has to really complement your story, what you are saying, and do it with, with pictures. Talk about the illustrator on that on on this book, The, the Children of Valor, and how you go about finding an, an illustrator that's that understands the message in your books. Okay. Um, I have four books out, five almost out now. Uh, well, I do have five out. Um, the, all different illustrators. Very first one I did was done by a company. But then I thought, I want more personal you know, input to this. Yes. So I sought it out. My sister did some. A friend of a friend did some. Then I found the uh, illustrator for this last book, The Children of Baylor. She's a 15-year-old child or teenager from San Diego, California. Now, my granddaughter now lives out there and she was in contact with someone who knew her and they sent me her work. I then send the, the story to the illustrator and say, are you interested in this? Do you want to illustrate? And whoever does, which so far everyone has, um, I just give them reign of what they want to put into the story. And you know, we review it and see if it looks good. And this child alone has done an amazing job with the coloring and everything in this book. So I think if I get my words out there, that's really makes me feel good. So let's have them put the artwork out there and give them a chance to shine too. So that's what I've done. I've used different ones for different books. And I'm reading the background for the, for the illustrator. You have Jenny Zhu. Am I saying that correctly? Jenny Zhu. Yeah. Yes, Jenny Zhu. And I'm reading, she's like a sophomore. Living as as you say, mm-hmm. you know, in San Diego, and she's been doing this forever, not all that long because she's only a sophomore in high school. What an amazing talent, and what an amazing opportunity you have given her to make your story come alive, and to to introduce her her beautiful illustrations to the world. So you're you're helping another child in essence. Well, yes, it may be that I gave Jenny a chance, but look what she's done. She's given my book a stand yes, out there because yes. she is that good. She is really good. All of the books. As are... has been others. 
you know, my sister did Fuzzy and another girl did Lucy Ann. They all added their own touch to it and their own personal ways and it shows. And I, I was very happy with all of them. Well, they all really enhance the story. Sometimes you sort of think, like, I'm not sure that the two even talked, the illustrator and the author, as they were working on this project. They really uh, complement what, what you're writing. This book, The Children of Valor, and again, that's V-A-A-Y-L-O-R on a faraway island, uh, is published by Matchstick Literary. Talk about the decision to publish and what it's what it takes to publish a book. It's one thing to have the idea. You've always had these ideas, but now, okay, here's the business part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write the book and now I have to find a publisher. Talk about that aspect of it. Well, I've written some of these books I wrote years ago. I mean, like 14, 15 years ago, easily, but I never had time. I always, always had a child I needed to attend to. I never, never had time to do it, but now that they're grown, I have the time and I looked back and thought, well, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to have listed as part of me out there when I am no longer here. So although it took a long time to get there, I eventually managed to, you know, to do it with a lot of, um, I published it myself through match literary to begin with, because I knew that maybe if I waited to have a regular person, pick it up a regular company that it might take longer. Maybe I needed some help in getting it out there. So um, I have a, um, a connection to the matchstick. Um, my main person is Victoria Fox, and she's been very, very good helping me get different things that I need to try and publish this book out there. You know, it's interesting, this whole process you go through in getting the book published. What's it like when you go through all of this? And then the first book, you you hold the copy. Here's this beautifully illustrated book that has your name on it because you wrote the book. Here's this story that you, you pulled together. It's out there now. It's touching children and families literally all over the world. What a, and, and here's this legacy. You've got your children that are impressed with what mom did, your grandchildren. Here's what, uh, here's what grandma did. What was that like the first time when you're holding a book, the finished product with your name on it? Yeah, you know, for me, it was like, oh, I can't believe, you know, so self-satisfying. But for my children, it was amazing. They were so excited. They took the book and they hit the, <laughs> the media with it to all their friends <laughs> and everything. I mean, I think they were almost more excited than I was at the time. But it was so great to know that I finally put out something that I felt like I really wanted to do all my life. And I finally did it. Well, you, you did that, and you did it so well. I'm going to go through the titles of the other books here. Again, the book we're talking about, specifically The Children of Valor on a Faraway Island, and Valor is V-A-A-Y-L-O-R. That's the that's one of the books out there. The others, Two Little Farmers in One Wooden Shoe, Lissy Ann and the Isle of the Gumdrop Trees, and then Can an Apple Really Talk? Fuzzy Learns a Lesson of Love is out there as well. And uh, look for more coming out from Patricia. Our guest on the program, Patricia McLaughlin, and uh, her spelling is M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Her website where she has all of this information so well done and laid out as well, patriciamclaughlin.com. Patricia, and then McLaughlin, M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N.com. Give me a lot of information, but the website is so worth the trip there. You'll find the books available at Amazon as well. And, of course, we'll have a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Patricia, just about out of time, you mentioned the new book you're working on. Any idea when that might be out? I am contacting an illustrator now. <laughs> so oh, it's going to be good. a while. But um, I've just come out recently with the last book. So I give people a chance to see it before I go into another one anyway. Probably may, maybe midsummer. It Perfect. could be out. Perfect. Well, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about that. And all of these books, talk about the new book, all of these books would be a welcome addition to uh, your child's library. Here's a book, again, that uh, your child can read, will learn, be entertained, share with the child. You can read to the child. Books available at Patricia's website, Amazon.com as well, and we'll have all that information on our website. Patricia, a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for spending some time with us. Oh, and Rick, thank you for having me on. It was really nice to have a chance to speak up here. 
Well, it was a pleasure to have you on doing an excellent job with these books. Looking forward to the next one. The newest is The Children of Valor, Patricia McLaughlin, our guest on the program. Books available at Amazon and go to our website this week in America.us for more information. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.